So in the previous PowerPoint, we discussed the characteristics that mark something as a living organism. Now, when we take a look at humans, uh, humans are considered to be multicellular. More specifically, they're made up of trillions upon trillions of cells that are used to make our organ systems. Now, these organ systems, as you can see, some of them are depicted. We have your cardiovascular system at the center. Uh, you have your digestive system on the side. You have your urinary system on the bottom and then your um, respiratory system working closely with your lungs. And uh, that's basically the, the general systems that you have in your body. But overall, you actually have total of 11 systems. These are just some of the main ones that are mentioned here. So for the next few slides, we will be looking at what are these systems and what are some of the structures and functions associated with each. So one of the most basic systems we have in our body are your skeletal system and your muscle system. So a skeletal system are basically your bones, your cartilage, and ligaments and tendons uh, that forms the uh, skeletal system. And their job is to basically provide you a framework um, as well as providing some levels of protection and with the help of a skeletal muscle give your ability to give you the ability to move now going um, with your uh, skeletal system we have muscular system even though we have three different types of muscles when we talk about this system we usually focus on the skeletal muscle system um, that includes basically any muscles that are connected to the skeletal system and um, they can create voluntary motions in your body associated with typically your movement, your posture, as well as producing heat to maintain your body temperature. We have nervous system. Uh, simply put, there are three main uh, structures or organs associated with them. Your nerves, your brain, and a spinal cord. And uh, the main functions of that is basically controlling the activity of the rest of the body uh, by, um, sorry, I should say coordinating and controlling the activities within your body by changing either uh, muscle contraction, by allowing glands to secrete their um, enzymes or their hormones, and basically through those actions and through electrical impulses, uh, enabling you to create um, or control your body activities. Um, <clears throat> going hand in hand with the nervous system, we have the endocrine system. In this case, we're not relying on the electrical impulses that were uh, used during the nervous system activities. Rather, in endocrine system, we rely on release of hormones from some of the glands that are listed, such as thymus, pituitary gland, your um, gonads, which are basically your sex organs, pancreas, and renal glands. And using the hormone, you can control basically the activity of the body. So in that sense, they're very similar to the nervous system. We have cardiovascular system, as I mentioned earlier, made up of your heart, blood, and blood vessels. And their job is to basically work as a transport system. Uh, to transport the oxygen and nutrients your cells need to survive and collect any waste products from those uh, structures. Um, going with cardiovascular system, we have lymphatic system that are drawn in green lines as well as some of the organs. Lymphatic system is actually made up of um, lymphatic uh, vessels, very similar to blood vessels. We have a spleen, thymus, your bone marrow, which is basically um, a structure that carries the cells of the immune cells. And there are two main functions associated with the immune system, or with your lymphatic system. Uh, they're responsible for different types of body and
Some of the structures associated with the digestive system include the oral cavity or your mouth, esophagus, a stomach, intestines, and you also have um, accessory glands including your liver and pancreas. The two main functions associated with this system, this system include digestion, which basically means breakdown of your food, and then distribution of the Reproductive system, uh, in the case of males, some of the main structures are toxins, tuning, testes, and sperm, and in In both cases, the main goal is to basically produce Here's a little bit more detail about the structure and um, each of the components we need to think about. The normal body temperature is about 37 degrees, and um, basically it ensures that the proteins and the molecules inside your body are working effectively. After phase of atmosphere, uh, as we mentioned earlier, has to do with the ability to properly breathe and breathe in air that is required uh, for the body activity. Now the last concept we will discuss here is the concept of homeostasis. If I want to put the concept of homeostasis in a very simple sense, I will simplify it to maintenance of, sorry, maintenance of an internal environment. Now some of the components that can be maintained via homeostasis include your body temperature, your calcium level, your glucose level, your um, Now I can think of anything else, because those are the three that I can see in front of me. 
Um, but the reason we need this homeostasis is because your body needs to be able to work under a very specific condition. So if these conditions are not maintained, therefore your body will not be able to survive. Now some of the other, um, other homeostasis that came to mind is blood pressure, heart rate, respiration. These are also components associated or maintained under homeostasis. Now to be able to effectively control homeostasis, you rely on feedback system, more specifically negative feedback system for majority of the system, which basically when you get to the bottom of the system, um, this system automatically shuts itself off. Um, so to make sure that you do not go beyond the acceptable range um, and be able to maintain your homeostasis. Positive feedback, on the other, can, uh, other hand, will um, create a loop that, or a vortex that basically when you create the final response in the homeostasis, that causes an amplification of the feedback. So the more you feed it, the bigger it gets basically versus negative feedback, when you reach a certain number, then your system will shut off. Now, as I mentioned, almost all of your systems in your body are maintained through negative feedback, such as body temperature, blood glucose, heart rate, respiration. Positive feedback, there's two really good examples. Uh, one is basically muscle contraction created by a hormone called oxytocin during childbirth. Because you don't want to go like, oops, I contracted the muscle, so I'm going to stop. And then, oh, I need to contract, and I stop. What you want to do is build up the contraction so the baby can be born. Same thing with um, platelet plugs. That gives you, basically, your ability to stop bleeding. So if you fix it a little bit, and then you stop it because of negative feedback, you can reopen that wound again. So using a platelet plug, the more you bring it attracts more components, it attracts more platelets, and as a result, you can actually complete the process and close the wound completely, rather than relying on a negative feedback, which just slows down the process and basically will not, uh, will not allow you to uh, stop the bleeding. Now, when we talk about homeostatic feedback, this is basically the components you need to know. Stimulus, sensor, integrator, Output, effector, response, and result. A stimulus is basically a change within your homeostasis. Going back to the example I was discussing with you, your body temperature, the stimulus would be body temperature going above or below the 37 degree, which is acceptable. Now, within your body, you will have something or a structure that recognizes the change that is happening, and that's referred to as sensor. Now, when that sensor detected the change, it's going to basically report to its boss, which we refer to it as integrator. When the boss notices the change, it's going to send out a message. That message that comes out, either as a source of an electrical impulse or a hormone, what it does, it's going to basically go and target a specific structures in your body. Those targets are referred to as effectors. The changes the effectors undergo because of the output is referred to as response. And if you, all of your responses go accordingly, you return everything back to normal, and that is considered to be your result. So let's take a look at a couple of words when we discuss this, and then we'll go to an example. Set point. Set point is an ideal number that is basically considered to be what you want to be at. For instance, for body temperature, that number would be 37 degrees centigrade. Error would be a, a small amount of change within the set point, which is still acceptable, but we just don't want to go too far from the error. So a normal range, for instance, for body temperature is half a degree below 37 and half a degree above the 37. So would be basically your error range would be 36.5 to 37.5. Now, if you go above or below this error point, then that's what triggers your homeostatic 
feedback loop. So let's take a look at the example for body temperature. As I mentioned, the stimulus would be increase in body temperature. It could as easily be decrease in body temperature. What identify the change in body temperature would be thermal receptors, thermal as in body temperature, receptors as receptors, that are present in two locations, a skin and a gland inside your brain called hypothalamus. Now in this case, your sensor and your integrator are partially the same. So hypothalamus notices the change and also acts as an integrator that's going to create a response. So hypothalamus is part of your brain and it's going to send a message to the following effectors. Your skin as well as the uh, sorry, blood vessels of your skin as well as the sweat glands of your skin. So these are effectors, the structures, organs. The response of these signal would be blood vessels are going to open up or vasodilate, vaso blood dilate open, opening blood vessels, sorry, vaso means um, vessels. So in that case, you have more blood coming to the surface of the skin, and as a result, you can release more blood, so you can release more heat uh, through the process of radiation, so you turn red basically, and you start to produce sweat using sweat glands to basically cool yourself down. If this process happened correctly, then your result would be decrease in body temperature. Note that there is a negative feedback loop in this process, which I'm sorry, I didn't show the arrow in this case, but it starts from the result and goes back to the stimulus. So you basically going to shut this system down as soon as you reach normal body temperature. Because if this system does not get shut off, you continue to decrease the body temperature. And as a result, you basically go to the other extreme. Another example that I provided for you here, and you do need to know the numbers and the structures, is your blood glucose level that are also maintained through homeostasis. So the stimulus in this scenario is an increase in blood glucose level above a set point, which is 120 milligram per deciliter. When that happened, in this case, your sensor and integrator is still the same are cells called beta cells of the islands of Langerhans. And you can also know that, that these are structures are found inside your pancreas. And when they notice that the blood glucose is high, they start to produce insulin and hormone. So in this scenario, your insulin is going to act as your output. Now, this output is going to have multiple effectors. What are those effectors? your body cells, the adipose tissue, your liver, and the skeletal muscle. What is insulin going to do to these structures? It's going to allow these structures to take in the extra glucose and convert it to a more complex version of the carbohydrate called glycogen. Now, when you take that glucose out of the blood, the result of that would be drop in the blood glucose below that 110 milligram per deciliter. Notice that there is a red arrow going from the bottom to the top. This implies that you have a negative feedback loop kicking in, so you don't drop the blood glucose below the normal level. Here is an example of the positive feedback loop where you have basically um, a damage to a blood vessel, you release platelets. When you have platelets, you actually require more platelets or attract more platelets. So you have a positive feedback loop going at the center and that causes the, uh, plot, the, the, sorry, the damaged blood vessel to be plugged. If there is any sort of disturbance in your homeostasis feedback, that usually causes a, a can cause a disease. A really good example of that would be a failure in the negative feedback loop or feedback loop of homeostasis associated with um, insulin. 
So here in this case, we have two types of diabetes, diabetes mellitus 1 and 2. Now, in the case of diabetes, you have two scenarios. You either will not be able to produce insulin, as it shows by the first arrow. This is your pancreas not being able to produce insulin. Or your body produces insulin, which is your output. However, that insulin is not affected, sorry, the um, effectors are not sensitive to your insulin. So I'm going to read this one more time. So in this scenario, when we talk about type 1 or type 2 diabetes, in type 1 diabetes, the pancreas, which is your integrator, is failing to produce the output insulin. That's the first blue arrow. We also have a second scenario, which is type 2 diabetes, where the output is present. However, the effectors are insensitive to the output. In both of these scenarios, your blood glucose will increase, and that's basically describing the lack of negative feedback loop that causes the disease called diabetes. So that's about it. Be very comfortable with the concept of diabetes. Sorry, not diabetes, the concept of homeostasis. Know the components. In exams, I usually expect you guys to be able to recreate these charts. I do expect you to also know what happens when your body temperature falls below the 36.5. So do some research and make sure you are able to work through the steps. And if you have any questions, please let me know on Wednesday. Thank you.